Bum bum bum. Bum 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 bottom. Bum 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 bum. Ba da da dum bum bum ba dum ba ba dum. Bum 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 ba dum bum 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 bum. Da 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 dum bum bum ba dum ba dum. Da 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 just want to be sure. Anyone else humming along? So I guess you can hear me. <laughs> so great to see everyone. Facebook Live people and my mighties. Wonderful to see you. I think you can hear me. Yes, I don't see Facebook coming through right. Okay, let's get that. Let's... There we go. There it is. All righty. So good evening, my friends. My name is Joette Calabrese, and every Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we do one thing and one thing only, and that is we discuss homeopathy. And I teach you what I know. I want to get this to you now. What if the internet goes down? I want you to have this. I want you to be writing it and putting it in your own Cache. I want you to put this in an important place. Everything that you learn here, I want you to have accessible to yourself, to you and your family. So, for those of you who are new, my name is Joette Calabrese and I'm here to teach you homeopathy. And tonight we're going to be talking about pain related to surgery. And for those who already know me, hello, my dear friends, it's great to see all of you. Yeah, I love to be here too on Monday nights. It's one of my great, it's a great kickoff for the week for me. All right, so you can hear me. Everything is good. Hello, wonderful friends from Indiana and from Central Illinois and Toledo, Ohio. And oh, so nice to see everyone. It is great. North Carolina, Baltimore. <laughs> great to see everyone. Australia, Texas. Great Britain, Ontario, Ohio, Wisconsin. Great, wonderful. Oh, uh, alrighty. So let's talk. What I wrote as a teaser to get you interested in this evening is that um, there are times when we have to submit to surgery, right? And we're told that the only way to deal with the pain after surgery um, is to use synthetic drugs. And we know what that can lead to. So we do everything we can to avoid that. Um, I've had two surgical procedures since I've learned about homeopathy. One was for an ectopic pregnancy many years ago. And another one was for um, a uh, dental surgery, uh, an extraction. Um, and that was the, both of them I used homeopathy. And it was, I was very successful in both situations. And so I'm going to talk to you about what to do instead of. Now, obviously, if someone has had surgery, there can be local anesthetic at the site because it maybe is not the kind of surgery that requires general anesthesia, or there's general anesthesia. And um, then there are all those in between. There are those categories in between. So let me show you what I've done here, what I always do. I know these remedies, but I want you to know them too. And this is the way I learned it. I used this repertory, Meta Repertory by Robin Murphy. Um, and this is the fourth edition. You can use the third edition as well. And so what I did is I looked up surgery. Okay. And there are many. Um, um, pages that include information on surgery. So I went with ailments from surgery. There are many choices, and I went with ailments from surgery. 
And I'm going to point them out to you. I want you to take a look. It's, I feel as though you can barely see what I'm showing you, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. All righty. So this is surgery, right? Here. Okay. And you can see the remedies. There's Arnica. There's Calendula. Uh, phosphorus, I think it says here. Staphysagria right here. There are many others. You see all of those in large print, too? See how those are the ones that are important. Bellus paranus, look at the top. Aconitum, anthracinum, arnica, belladonna, bell. So I'm reading only the ones that are emboldened and that have a dark print or are um, dark and uh, capitalized and or dark capitalized and underlined. Look at that. Look at calendula. C-A-L-E-N, capitalized, bold, and underlined, hypericum, excellent, phosphorus, pyrogenium, staphysagria, strontium carb. You see all of those? All good medicines for, um, for ailments from surgery. Now, what does it mean, ailments from surgery? It could be um, nausea and vomiting. It could be someone not coming out of the, the anesthesia very well. It could be, of course, pain. So um, inflammation from, coming, from surgery, infection after surgery. These are all rubrics that follow down, the, down the, <coughs> the column. So what we have to do is we have to come up with the right medicine. And coming up with the right medicine will depend on the right category that we use. So if we're looking under ailments from surgery, um, problems from anesthesia is one another one, after bleeding, um, colic from uh, after surgery, fistula, operation of fistula, um, ailments after gallbladder is removed. Kind of interesting, isn't it? So we're not talking about the immediate effects when we're talking about a gallbladder removal. We're talking about perhaps the long-term effects infection after surgery now what do we mean by infection after surgery we're not talking about you know someone getting you know an ear infection or sore throat necessarily we're talking about potential of sepsis we're talking about generally infection at the site okay and so i'm going to show that one to you because i think that's even though it may not be related necessarily to pain let's see if you can see that Right there where my finger is. Okay, after infection, pyrogenia, my friends. There's calendula again. But look at this. Pyrogenium is in bold, capitalized, and underlined. Then there's also staphysagria down there. I can't get my finger to go that way. Let's go this way. There it is, staphysagria. And um, then there's belladonna, bellus paranus, this way up here. But look how important pyrogenium is and staphysagria and calendula. Very important remedies. Now what we have to do is decide what is the ailments from surgery. And we're going to be talking about tonight specifically pain. Pain as an ailment after surgery. So when we look at the first category and we look at, remember I pointed out calend arnica? Bellus paranus, calendula, which was underlined, hypericum, phosphorus, pyrogenium, staphysagria, strontium carb. The one that stands out in my mind are two very important ones, actually three, arnica, calendula, and hypericum. It doesn't mean that those are the only ones that we should be considering, but when we're talking about pain, those are really great medicines for pain and particularly pain after surgery. So now you may already know that uh, uh, there is a, uh, a product out there that is manufactured by Hahnemann Pharmacy. Their derivative is Alpine and they sell a product called Cinec. And it's very specific for ailments from surgery. It has to do with ek, meaning echimosis, sin meaning, meaning not. 
So it's or um, uh, antithetical to ecchymosis. So it means without or without um, ecchymosis, sin ek. And it's a fascinating medicine because it is made of arnica. It's gorgeous. And what's particularly interesting about it is that Sinek is not something that we find in the, you know, the typical little pills, such as in Voron, because of course this is manufactured by Hahnemann. Um, but it's, it has been marketed very um, cleverly, exquisitely, intelligently to uh, physicians, to surgeons, to plastic surgeons. And they've been, plastic surgeons have been using Sinek for so many years that I don't know that they even know that it's homeopathy. I don't think they care because it works. There are no side effects. It's an excellent medicine for plastic surgery for when there is ecchymosis or the potential of ecchymosis, which is black and blue. So when we use, when they use, when they perform surgery, a, a plastic surgery on the face, it is known for causing <clears throat> tremendous ecchymosis, black and blue. And that is one of the problems that is, um, that is uh, most common after plastic surgery, not to mention pain because Arnica is one of our great medicines for pain. So when we see that there is someone is going to be, um, submitting to surgery and i say submitting meaning um it is like a war we don't want to submit to surgery um without really important good rationale there are times when we must have surgery an injury requires surgery um, ectopic pregnancy a tooth that absolutely must be extracted would be all these are situations in which surgery would be called for, would be mandatory. And so what is most often used is Arnica Montana, the night before surgery in a 200 potency, the morning of surgery, Arnica Montana 200, just before the person is wheeled into the surgical arena, and then afterwards as needed. Okay, it is an excellent medicine. Now, if you, if you um, tell your doctor that you're going to be taking Arnica, they, if they don't know anything about homeopathy, and 95% of them, perhaps even greater than that, don't know what homeopathy means, they don't realize that homeopathy is a dilution process. When it's 200 C, it means it's been diluted 200 times to the 100th power. They think it's just the original substance. And so they'll look up Arnica and Arnica in its original gross form will indeed cause, can cause bleeding. So that's a good thing because we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use the homeopathic version, which means it's highly diluted and succussed. Diluted and succussed, diluted and succussed 200 times. 200 times to the hundredth power which means that what it causes in the original form is what it will eliminate in the homeopathic form. So yes, indeed, Arnica could cause bleeding if you used it in the gross form before surgery, but in the homeopathic form, it does the opposite. It corrects bleeding plus pain, plus the potential of infection. It protects against infection. And what's so lovely about these medicines that are used for pain is that it's not just for pain. Pain is only a symptom. Pain is only um, the body's way of telling you something is off, but it will also deal with the other issues as well. So when we think of calendula, that's another great medicine. Um, I've not used calendula very often in potency. I have usually used it in gross form, and that is one of the one of the medicines, homeopathic medicines, that when used in gross form, in its botanical form, is not toxic, will not cause a problem. It's good in its botanical as well, and its gross form, as well as in its homeopathic when it's diluted, say, 200 times to the 100th power. So calendula is also an excellent medicine for post-surgical pain, 
even though we would use the arnica in advance the night before the morning of just before wheeling into the arena and coming just coming out of it and then using it as needed for ecchymosis black and blue for pain etc we can use more than one remedy at a time my friends now i also adore hypericum for pain <clears throat> it is one of our all-time remedies that is specific for pain that has a very distinct pain. It's a pain that is quite extreme, quite extreme pain, pain that is like a nerve pain. It could be traveling along a nerve. It could feel like a nerve pain. It could feel like a zinging, but then it might not even be that. It might simply be pain that is extraordinary. And what potency would we use that in? We would not use that. I personally would not use that in advance of the surgery. I would use that as needed after the surgery, which may not be needed, my friends, using Arnica, <clears throat> excuse me, using Arnica prophylactically the night before the morning of and just before the arena, the surgical arena, and then shortly after, within minutes after. The person may not need hypericum at all. I've had many, many repeat uh, 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 people report to me that Arnica did it. They didn't have to use anything else. While others tell me, oh no, hypericum, I really needed that as well. And so they went to hypericum, sometimes 200, sometimes even higher potencies than that. So Arnica will work in place of aspirin with Plavix to keep stents open. Oh, well, we're not talking about that. So I'm not going to go there, but I think you're having a conversation amongst yourselves. So I'll let you all answer for each other. <clears throat> Could Hypericum be used for recurring pain from shingles? We're going to talk about surgery tonight. I'm not going to go into that right now. Love Hypericum for pain. You bet, Sarah. <clears throat> I crushed my fingertip and it hurt so much. Arnica 200 and Aconite 200 saved the day, I believe. If I took Staphylococcus later to help heal the fracture. Yes, calendula. When would you use 10 M's? <clears throat> Excuse me. Tonight for having to clear my throat. Surgery is a controlled trauma to correct an uncontrolled trauma. That's an interesting way of putting it. Um, all right. Hypericum, well, let's go back. Arnica often has pain that gives the person a sense of feeling beat up, achy, beat up, like somebody punched you in the sight. <clears throat> and it can also be quite extreme pain, but hypericum is extraordinary pain. So I tell the story, I have told the story about when I had a tooth extracted years ago, <clears throat> and um, it was um, it was infected, and I asked the dentist to please scrape the bone, remove the ligament, uh, and take everything out. Make sure there wasn't any any ability for that infection to return on any level. And so he was pretty aggressive, and I appreciated that. And um, I used, um, when, the, when the anesthesia wore off, it was local. When the local anesthesia wore off, it felt like someone had gotten a revolver and pointed it at my jaw and shot. The pain was extraordinary. Now, that's not unusual, my friends. So when I say that Arnica can take care of pain after surgery, often for soft tissue pain, I, um, Arnica can do it, <clears throat> just that alone. Whereas when it comes to something like the bone or the dent, dent uh, the, the, the whole dental area, the mouth, the mandible, the maxillary, the pain is much more extreme because there are many, many nerves in the mouth. You could have something um, extracted here or even an infection here and you might feel it here. Sometimes people can't say, I mean, it's not uncommon for people to say, I don't know what tooth that pain is emanating from because there are so many nerves. So hypericum is specifically for an area that is nerve rich, fingertips, toes, injuries to fingertips, injuries to toes, a hammer falls on the foot, or something heavy falls, a concrete slab falls on the foot or on the fingers, crushed fingers. Um, surgical surgery or injury to the jaw, uh, anywhere in the mouth. Um, what else? 
coccyx pain to the <clears throat> to the to the coccyx that lots of nerves in the back and especially at the tailbone hypericum 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 for when a woman has given birth and and especially if she's had pitocin because there's that pounding that really hard the head of the baby is hitting hard and sometimes the 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 the, the the aim of the head is right at the tailbone, and the and it's and it's very beat up. Arnica is great for that, but then if that doesn't do it, then we can go to Hypericum. It is so good. Trigeminal nerve could use a higher potency. Yep, people are really talking amongst themselves here. It's really great in in um, the mighties. Thank you for for helping each other. It's great. I used Arnica 200 on Friday after a sudden injury. The pain subsided after only a couple of minutes. It was a game changer, and I am lucky it was in my purse. Yes, my friends, keep these remedies in your purse. Spinal and cervical nerve pain. Thank you, Greg. You're absolutely right. Trigeminal. These are hypericum uses. But keep these remedies in your purse. Um, Especially if you or are you, uh, you're prone to injuries or you're going to be going on a long trip or your children um, are prone to injuries. You have a, a lot of very busy, uh, active kids. Yep, Hypericum is for extreme pain. Hypericum is made from St. John's wort. I've actually used St. John's wort uh, for pain as well. Um, let me just see what else we've got here. Pain is nerve-generated signal. What about bellus for, for rotator cuff, for soft tissue? Bellus is a possibility, but I think of bellus as even more for, it is, it a, it is a possibility, but bellus is more for softer tissue, breast tissue, for example. I never leave home without my homeopathy kit, says Pamela. I made a first aid kit for the car of homeopathic remedies, says Harry. Smart thinking, Harry, absolutely. Um, I fell with all my weight on my ribs against the side of the tub. I took Arnica right away at the ER in a few days and for, and for a few days and no bruising at all. Yes. When is calendula indicated? Good question, Irene. So I've talked about Arnica. I've talked about Hypericum. Calendula is, is also for, for a uh, very important for surgery. Um, and a pain from surgery, I'm differentiating so that you can get a real good feel for when to use, when you're more likely to use Arnica or Hypericum. Um, but let's look at, um, um, I'm going to get something, my, some of my information out here so that I can be very specific about our calendula use. Now, calendula, by the way, you can make your own calendula tincture, which is a great thing to do, okay? Um, it's But calendula is for pain when there are abrasions. Um, could we use it for surgery? Absolutely. For incisions, incisional pain. Not all surgery has incisional pain. I know that sounds crazy, but um, it depends on how deep the incision was, how far they had to go, how large it was. Um, it's also a great antiseptic used as a homeopathic. And it's um, it can also be useful for controlling bleeding that's related to it. So calendula and there's another remedy. Let's see if you guys know. I know you're going to know this. Another remedy that's really great for the incision, the incisional pain, as well as incisional infection to protect against incisional infection. And I know you guys are going to tell me what it is. I crushed my fingertip and it hurt so much. Arnica, okay, I said that. I already read that. Okay, love hypericum for pain. Could hypericum be used for recurring pain? For, okay, let's see. Uh, Steph Sagra, Colleen, very good, very good. Absolutely. Steph Asagria, Pam, excellent. Susan, Dolly, wonderful. Nice job, everyone. Steph Asagria. Now, I would not start with Steph Asagria, my friends. I would hold off a little bit because you might find out that that incision may not be as much of a problem as, uh, as what Hypericum could address for the general overall pain. But, you know, there's another kind of pain um, that... 
people don't think to consider. Many times during surgery, the person, the unconscious person is put in very odd positions so that the surgery is more readily, um, um, so that the surgical site is more accessible to the surgeon. And they can put that person in that position without breaking bones or whatever, but they, but when they come out of that, they were in an unnatural position that was caused a great deal of strain on tendons or muscles or joints. And then we use potentially a different medicine. And that's not for incisional pain. It's not for infection. It's more for a beat up pain of, of feeling as though the, 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 the area has been overused or used incorrectly. Almost like, um, you know, when you fall asleep, say in the car and someone else is driving and you fall asleep in an unnatural position, your neck is crooked and you might get torticollis. That's unnatural and it's, it's in that position for too long and then it causes a strain. Um, then we would use, and already people are already telling me it's very good. Very good. Rustox, Ruta, or Symphytum. Now that's not actually surgery, but it can be caused as a result that can come as a result of submitting to surgery. You bet. What potency? I would use it in a 200. I would consider 1M. Definitely, I would consider 1M. I, when I use Rustox, and I do use it from, from time to time, I personally use it in a 1M because it goes bam, and it's gone. I don't have to worry about it any longer. So we've got some good medicines here. Nice job, everyone. I watch, I'm watching you come up with these answers. Hi from Guam. Very cool. Hi. <laughs> That's Sarah. Excruciate. What about old pain, even uh, maybe arthritis from old surgical site? Arthritis from an old surgical site. In other words, the surgery was at the joint. I would go to what, what we're talking about here is when it is arthritis, we're going to think about it a little differently when it's a joint pain or it's a, um, a tendon or a muscle pain. Then we're going to be thinking about Roostox, right? Generally. Can't say for sure. But that's where we would consider because it's a joint. But if it's actually the, the surgery that caused it or ailments from the surgery and ever since then, then I might consider any one of these medicines that we've been talking about. Arnica kept my daughter off of opioids, opioids after ACL surgery. Her classmate was not so lucky. Yeah. My friends, in some ways, it's luck. Is it luck that you found me, that you found homeopathy? Is that luck? Or is it tenacity? Is it curiosity? Is it commitment to self-regulation for finding another way? Now, sometimes it's luck because many people live a life where they've not had a lot of suffering. And no, it's God, says Vanessa. Yeah, it is. It is a God thing. There's no doubt about it. Um, and so um, sometimes it's, it's people live a life where they're, they've not had much suffering. So they haven't had to question the common answers. It's those of us who have had to question the status quo because we've lived through the status quo and that we have found to be wanting. Wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. I think it's so. Let's see what else we've got here for questions. I love this um, statement. Um, from 
Dark Horse podcast. If you're not familiar with the Dark Horse podcast, you might want to check that one out. Um, but he says, I think it's on his actual, on his site. He says, think deeply, think differently. And that, if that isn't exactly what I'm trying to teach everyone, whatever you're told you should do, don't do it. Go the opposite, especially in today's world. There was a time when common sense prevailed. I lived in a neighborhood when I was a little girl where if I did something wrong, a neighbor would report it to my mother. I lived in a neighborhood where everybody had the same values. We were the only Italian Americans in this neighborhood for quite a long time. And then, and most everyone was Irish, but we all went to the same parish. Our parents had the same values. We ate differently. We ate Italian food. My friends ate Irish food or Americanized food, but the values were the same. There was a commitment to the family. Everyone, everyone at five o'clock at night was seated at the dinner table and everyone was having dinner. Mother, father, children. The house was kept tidy and organized by the mothers, you know, women who considered their a very important job was to raise the children. How unapologetically old fashioned is that, huh? <laughs> because women, mothers do something that no one else can do. We make the people, <laughs> just think about that. We make the people. Men make the bridges. Men build the houses. Men take care of the houses. Men protect the people, the mothers, the grandmothers. But women make the people. What do you think? Important? I'd say. <laughs> and so, the values that my neighborhood had were all tightly knit. And so because of that, common sense prevailed. That's gone, except for in our little community and in others. And so I'm going to tell you, my dear friends, whatever they say, do the opposite. And this is one of the ways we can do it. Learn this medicine and know it. And so with that, I say God bless you all, and I will see you next Monday. And we'll continue talking about pain. There's so many ways we can go after pain. Bye.